Hello everyone, Valerie here and welcome back to Art a la carte. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to draw a horse grazing. So let's get started. Pencil and some paper and the best part is having lots of fun with Art a la carte. Now if you need some help on the basic setup or structure of a horse, I have a whole load of videos on that. I will put a link to the playlist of those in the description box below so you can check those out. If there's something that I go over and that you want a little bit more detail on, I would highly recommend that you do that. But we're going to take and just block out the shape of our horse using some basic shapes. And I'm going to start off first with a circle shape for the um, kind of the front chest area, withers area, just right here. And then I'm going to bring this kind of little bit of a curved line back, and this is the backbone here. And depending on you know, the age of your horse and the breed, you might have it sway back a little bit more or have a more pronounced wither. Um, but have that come on back. And then over here to another circle for the rump area. And the distance between these is going to be about half of one of these circles will be the distance between those. These two circles are relatively about the same size. Now the bottom here you don't want to have it straight across, you want a nice little curved line. Just like that. So now you have this like weird like, I don't know, macaroni noodle. <laughs> this here is going to be the main body of your horse. Now you'll see that I am drawing with just a kind of a red colored pencil here. You could use just a regular drawing pencil, but what I do recommend is that you draw really, really lightly. That way if you do make something you want to change it, it's easier to erase. Now for the legs, I'm just going to sketch in a very light box. These are not the legs. These are just going to give me the kind of the distance of it. And I don't want a completely, it's a more of a rectangle. It's almost a complete square shape, but the distance between here and here is going to be a little bit longer than the distance from here to here. So it's not a complete square, almost, but not quite. So if you want to measure that, you can take your pencil and line it up there. And then when you flip your paper around, you can see if I put it right there, there's a little bit over the top. And again, this can completely change depending on what breed or what your horse looks like. That's just a general guide rule, kind of how, how far these legs are going to come down. Now when a horse is standing with its head up, its legs can be together, that's perfectly fine, but I've noticed in my observation of looking at horses uh, grazing and looking at different photographs is that um, because of the distance of their neck has to travel, usually their front legs will be um, not together. So, so here this leg here, I'm going to draw it from the shoulder here coming kind of down to the back kind of the elbow of the horse, coming down here to the knee and then the rest of the foreleg. I'll have this leg back just a little bit, where then I'll have this leg here, instead of having it, you know, I don't want it this way because the horse would fall over. This leg here will be brought forward just a little bit. And the reason they do that is just kind of help lower their body down to the ground a little bit so that they can eat. Um, and again, if it's on, you know, uneven ground and, you know, the you know, kind of slopes up a little bit, you don't have to do that, but if it's pretty flat ground, um, just, you'll notice that if you look at reference photos and stuff like that, you'll see that their front legs are usually um, not together. They're leaning on one more than the other to kind of bring themselves down just a little bit. So we're going to bring this back leg here. Here's the hips here. It's going to come down to it's a, kind of the front part of the knee, coming down to the back of the leg, and then down. And then this one here, I'm just going to have this one kind of, so he's kind of doing a little slow walk while he eats. And you'll notice I'm putting these legs in just with little stick figures. That way I can go back in and thicken up the lines and add all the details that I want later. But this way I can make sure that everything is in the right position before I really get into the hyper detail area. All right, now for his for the neck, you're gonna start up here right at the top of the withers. You don't wanna start down here. You wanna start right here and just kinda of swoop this line down right about just above where the knees come out you're going to stop that line and i'm going to put in a circle shape here and this is for the first part of the horse's head it's kind of the back cheek area and then i'm going to put a second but much smaller little circle down here this will be for the muzzle of the horse now we can kind of connect the dots a little bit all right now this under part of the neck isn't going to come 
up here. It's actually going to go right up into, into the chest there just a little bit and you'll see a little bit of the chest muscle come down. So there we go, we have our kind of basic horse shape. Maybe the head's a little bit large and that's again why we kind of work really lightly so that I can kind of pull this back and get that shape the way I like it. I like the neck there, just my head was getting to be just a little bit too large. Sometimes when you're drawing your horse in a different position than you normally do, um, say if you draw your horse with its head straight up, it can be kind of easy to get your proportions off a little bit. So um, take your time to really measure that out. Look at that. You know, look at it at a different angle to make sure that everything is measuring up in the right way. Once you have everything the way you like it, then you're going to go ahead and begin to fill in the details. And again, I go into a lot more detail in some of my other videos, so I highly recommend that you go and check those out. I have videos on you know, drawing horses in different positions, just the basic body, um, how to draw horse legs, horse hooves, horse ears, horse heads all that good stuff and if there is something that you don't see a video for if you look through my archives and you don't notice that I have something on that you can always leave that as a suggestion in the comment section below um, I love to kind of hear back from you guys feedback of things that you would like to see um, a little bit more detail with all right so there the basic body shape is all put in and now we can begin kind of refining everything out, deciding on which way you want the ears to look. Usually when they're grazing, their ears aren't um, put directly forward. Their ears are directed into the way they're paying attention, and they're not really paying attention to the grass because they are a prey animal. Uh, they're always paying attention to things around them, so you'll notice that their ears are kind of like little satellite dishes, and they're, you know, this one's paying attention to stuff over here, and this one's paying attention to stuff over there, and um, you'll notice that their ears are always kind of moving, keeping track, even if they feel like they're in a really safe environment, they're always keeping tabs on what's going on, so um, it's a good observation not to put your horse's ears straight forward. They're going to be not back back like he's angry but uh, they will be definitely paying attention to things all right so then we're going to get back to the tail here you can either draw the tail just very loosely down or you can kind of draw it out like it's swishing flies um, it definitely probably wouldn't be holding the tail up unless it's doing something else which you know when you eat yeah anyway uh, so you kind of have a little i uh, you know freedom to work with that a little bit. And then the mane itself is going to be coming down with gravity, so it's not just going to come you know, down like this, it's going to be following however gravity goes. And I think it's fun to do a mane and do a little bit on one side and then have it flip over on this side and then back over. My horses always seem to have crazy manes and they never quite stayed on one side. so. And then same thing with the, the forelock, just right down between the ears. Nose. And then if you need a little help on that under chin there, the cheek kind of comes out a little bit and it kind of sinks in a little bit underneath there and then protrudes out just a little bit for that lower jaw. So now comes the part where you can finish this up and however you want, whether you're doing this with pencil, you want to add some more pencil shading, um, you want to paint this, uh, whatever you decide you, how you want to finish your picture. Um, but I am going to give you just one more tip with this, and that is to adding some grass. This is really fun because you don't have to go into all the detail of drawing the hooves and all that. And I'm just going to make some little flicks of my pencil upward around the hooves and even up around the muzzle and it's just going to give a little indication of some grass. So you don't have to draw a ton of grass, you can just give a little texture indication of the tufts of grass and that, that looks kind of cool. So I'm going to speed this up into time lapse while I finish adding in the color to my piece. So I figured while I am doing this in time lapse I might give you a little tips and tricks along the way. So you can see the very first thing that I do when I start coloring, I'm going to be using color pencils, is to erase 
pretty much all of my lines. So as you know, I've drew really, really lightly. So when I take my gummy eraser over top of it, it pulls almost all the lines up. And I just want kind of what I consider a ghosting of the original line, just enough that I can kind of see it. Now in this video, I'm gonna leave a little bit stronger of a line in the picture than I normally would if it was just um, me working by myself. Um, but if it was that way, then the camera wouldn't even pick it up. So I'm gonna leave it a little bit so that you guys can kind of still see what I'm doing. Then what I'm going to do is, um, generally I start with my lightest color first, but that's the awesome thing about art. You don't have to follow the rules. You can break it up, you know, break the rules and start wherever you want. So I'm actually starting with the mid-tone first, and I'm laying that down in there. But the thing you want to know with um, starting in the middle or darker tones first is that you have to really know where your highlights and shines are going to be because you don't want to cover those up. So... I actually really work my mid-tone with the shadows first and then kind of blend them out a little bit um, towards the middle areas. Um, so my places that I really want my darkest tones are going to be places like um, the crevices uh, where the shoulder is, meaning the, the rib cage or the back leg. Things that I want to push back um, are the places I'm going to make a little bit darker. Now, if you want any more helps and tips on how to use color pencils, I have a whole series series called Using Color Pencils 101, and I'll leave that in the playlist as well, so you can check that out. I do a pretty detailed uh, series of videos where I go through the different tools that I use, the type of color pencils I use, whether or not you need to use really expensive color pencils, or you can, or if you can just use, you know, regular cheap brands. So here I have my finished and completed little horse. Actually, it's not complete as you can see, but I'm going to finish the rest of this in another upcoming video. We're going to be talking about the importance of a background and a foreground to give an environment to your character. So um, yeah, make sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already so that you don't miss that video. It'll be coming up pretty quickly, I'm thinking, along, of course, with all my other videos that I post during the week as well. Well, thank you guys for hanging out with me, and until next time, God bless you guys, and we'll see you later.